And now, everybody's favorite post-podcast podcast. That's right. It's Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. Oh, yeah. We're back. Yep. We're back, guys. Uh, Guess who's back? Back again. Back again. Eddie that was awesome. back. <laughs> that was Good awesome. Show. Yeah. It was it was episode forty one, and some might say it was forty wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, super good time. Michelle's awesome. Uh, good good tips from. Well, I'm excited to see what the tips are going to be from DJ Howard, and good tips from Tony with Into Pickle. Just a good episode all around. A really good one. Yeah, absolutely. And it was uh, it was one of our shorter episodes, but sometimes. Shorter is sweeter. Yeah, I mean, I felt bad. I know Michelle needed to, she, you know, she was driving back to Florida or, you know, she was going back to Florida right now. So anyway. Yep. But how fun. cool? I mean, how cool was that? She she just competed and did commentary in the Atlanta Open earlier today. And uh, and she joined us on our show. I mean, that was cool. How cool was that? It's very cool. Oh, so cool. It, do you think you would like that let life that, you know, uh, traveling and playing pickleball or doing pickleball related things? Like how, how do you think you would do with that? Um, I don't know. The, the traveling nonstop thing could be tough for me, but I mean, just being able to do pickleball all the time, that sounds glorious. Yeah. Like would it be good enough to where you would be okay with flying to, to do it? Like, do you like pickleball enough to where you would put up with flying on a regular basis to do it? Uh, I feel like I feel like I could probably do that. Everybody, I mean, <laughs> most people that know me personally know that I absolutely hate flying, um, but I did it recently. I flew down to Florida to Naples to do a tournament with you, so that just shows how much I love pickleball. I was willing to uh, face my fears and fly down to Florida in the winter. The plane had to be de-iced. That's like. I love that. That's like that's like guaranteed doom if your plane has to be de-iced before you take off. <laughs> yep. There I mean, the vast majority of airplanes do not stay in the air when they're de-iced. That's just that's just fact, right? Yeah, I mean if you look at the statistics, what is it? Like eight out of every ten flights that takes off in the winter doesn't make it. I mean, it's horrible. Those are facts. <laughs> at baby. least that's how yeah. At least that's those are the facts in my head anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag fake news. Um <laughs> enough about that. Uh, what are we talking about today, man? I feel like, I feel like we've had so many great things to talk about. And then all of a sudden we have awesome guests that want to come on and join us on dinking around. We never get to them, but now right. it's like, now it's like old news. Like I'm not going to talk about right. something from two months ago, you know? Right. Yeah. Seriously. We've had so many great things to talk about. And then we always get awesome guests. I mean, when we started this show, we were like, okay, we're going to, this is, this is the show that we're going to like focus on what we're up to. Yeah. Um, because that way the hardcore fans can find out like the updates that like things we've got going on. Cause a lot of people that watch the main podcast, it's kind of boring to them to hear about us. Cause who cares about us? But right. there are people out there that actually like what we talk about. So we'll do this show to like talk about all of our updates. And then if we're lucky, maybe, maybe a guest will join us and almost every single episode, a guest has joined us immediately and it's been awesome, <laughs> but we just, we don't get to talk about ourselves. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, what do you, you know what we should do? We should just like, you pick what you want to talk about and we'll talk about it. And then I'll pick what I want to talk about and we'll talk about. What do you think about that? That sounds pretty good. Actually, like since our last episode, I've had three pretty awesome things happen in my life as far as pickleball goes. Um, so do you want me to like list those three things and then you can pick one of them to th for me to go into or... I'll say I'll say something. You say something. Then I'll say something. I mean, this is this is thinking around. It's not planned. Let's let's figure it out right now. <laughs> yeah, it's not planned. We'll just, well, we'll just start with one. Let's start with one, and and we'll go. We'll we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it takes us, man. We don't need a script. We don't need to pr right. prepare. We just need to roll with this. All right, this is what I'll do. This I'll I'll talk about my favorite thing. My favorite thing that happened that's pickleball related since our previous episode is the fact that I did a pickleball tournament with my eleven year old daughter. <laughs> Yeah. How cool is that? That's so cool. First of all, I think it's awesome that she's into it. Uh, and, you know, it, it gives you guys an activity to do together. But the fact that she was even willing to go and, like, spend time at a tournament, that's pretty right? cool, man. That is that is really cool. 
Yeah, like it was very proud father moment. And what it was, it was the second annual Memorial Day picnic that was put on by the Clinton Township Pickleball Club here in Michigan. And uh, I saw an alert on Facebook about the event uh, probably about a month ago or so. And I was with my family at the time and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. The 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 Clinton Township Pickleball Club is putting on this uh, pickleball picnic on Memorial Day. It's a family friendly event. And they said if enough people show interest, they'll do a mini tournament. And I was like, oh, that, that would have been kind of cool. But we, we usually have stuff going on on Memorial Day. We go out of town or whatever. And uh, But then I realized we did not have anything going on that weekend. And my younger daughter, uh, Addie, who is only 11 years old and has been starting to show an interest in pickleball, uh, she's actually the one that said, "Ooh, w- would I be able to play if we went there?" Wow! And I was like, "I probably, but let me check." I so I reached out to so, I reached out to the uh, the organizer on Facebook, and I was like, "Hey, if if I was to come here with my family, would I be able to play with my 11 year old daughter in this tournament if it happens?" And they were like, "Yeah, absolutely, for sure." So I told her that, and she got super excited. And the the place is like it's over. It's like around an hour away from my house, so it's not like super close. And it wasn't something I was planning on doing, but she was so excited to do this tournament. I was like, man, we've we've got to do this. We've got to make it work. So we planned uh, to go there. Uh, the family and I, we all packed up a, a cooler with sandwiches and picnic stuff. And we went there. And uh, and then, yeah, my, uh, my younger daughter and I were able to play pickleball for fun for a bit. And then the tournament got started and we were able to play together. And it was awesome. Cool. Like what, what was the tournament like? Was it like a very, um, competitive one, a little bit more casual, how many people were in it? So definitely more casual, but a lot of really good players were in it. So like a lot of people that showed up to this picnic, um, like I've, I I knew a good amount of them and they're, they're all good, like at least 3.5 and above players. Um, or at least the ones that I know, I mean, maybe there were some that were, weren't that level, but a lot of people that I knew were definitely higher level players and the way that they were doing it is it was actually a random partner tournament. So everybody signs up that wants to play, and then they have an A group and a B group. And the A group, I believe, was 3.5 and above, and the B group was, like, uh, if you think you're under 3.0 or 3.5. So that way, it's, like, a higher-level people paired up with a random lower-level person. Okay. And um, luckily, they made an exception and just let me play with my daughter. Cause like she, she didn't want to play with any, like a random person. She wanted to play with me. Right. So luckily they just, they set our tickets aside. Cause I was, I was, I put myself in the higher level group and then I signed her up in the lower level group. And then they just, they pulled our tickets out and let us play together. So that was very awesome that they let us do that. And nobody had any complaints. Everybody was very cool about it, but for everybody else, it was just uh, two random people that got picked to, uh, to be, to be paired up. Um, so luckily they made the exception for us to play together. And I mean, I, I went into this ex- fully expecting to go out in round one because I mean, Addison, she's only got, I mean, she's only played a handful of times. Right. Um, and like her, her eye hand coordination, it's okay, but it's not great. Definitely needs work. Um, but a couple days before the tournament, her and I went to Freedom Park in Canton, Michigan, uh, just to dink around a bit. And then I kind of, I helped her work on her serve because that was, that's something that she, uh, needs a lot of help on is keeping her serve inbounds consistently. Um, so we kind of did some training, kind of just went back and forth, serving back and forth to each other. And then we dinked back and forth with each other. And just after doing that for an hour and a half, she improved greatly. And when it came time for this tournament, like I was blown away at how good she did. I mean, she she was returning shots that I thought for sure she was not going to be able to return. Um, when she was returning them, the, the ball was, there were nice dinks. They were mm-hmm. shallow dinks. Um, she was hitting stuff like on the the edge of the of the court, like uh, on the sideline and stuff like that. And yeah. like, it was it was pretty wild. And to be honest, for the the first half of the game, I was the one. I kept making unforced errors. It wasn't <laughs> even her missing shots or people like hitting a shot that she couldn't return. It was <laughs> I was the one that gave up the first few points for our for the, the game that we played. So I was like totally blown away at how much she focused. She didn't make, I don't think she made, she maybe made one serve error, but maybe not even one. Like, like during the actual game, like she, I don't think she made any serve faults, one at the most. 
um, that's better than I do in most regular tournaments that I've <laughs> played lately. So, I mean, yeah, I just, yeah, I, I could not believe how good that she did. I was, it was a very proud moment. Uh, the games went to 13 is how it was. And it's single elimination. So if you lose, you're out of the game. Mm. And uh, the final score was 13 to eight. So, I mean, I'm okay. super proud of that. We, we were very, very competitive for a good portion of that game. And it looks like uh, your competition are actually friends of ours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turns out that the, uh, the first team we played is our buddy, Anthony and, uh, and his girlfriend, as a matter of fact. So we uh, played against people that we know. And for a moment there, like they, they took a lead, but then at one point we tied it up. It was five to five. And then it can, it went back and forth a bit. Uh, but then they took a, a little bit of a lead towards the end and they ended up winning it. But for a moment there, I was thinking that like we very well might win this game. Like, hmm. like I never, never would have thought that would have been the case. Like I just figured, okay, it's going to be a one and done thing, but at least I can say I got to play with my daughter in a tournament. But for, for a good portion of that match, I was like, you know what? We can win this thing. Mm-hmm. Nice. So then did you get to like, after that game was over, that was it for a tournament. You guys were done. Yeah, we were done, uh, but it was a quick tournament. It, it went by pretty quick. Um, and they, the place has six courts. So they they left at least a couple of the courts open for people to just still do like open rec play just so people could, weren't just sitting around. Um, so, after we were done, we we ate the sandwiches that we made, ate some pickles. I drank some pickle juice to restore electrolytes, and then we went back out on the court and played a couple games for fun. And it was okay. just yeah, it was a super fun time. I would love to make that a a yearly thing that I do. And th- I mean that's so cool because you know getting her in this young too. I mean God, if she's into it, imagine by the time she's you know four or five years from now, she could she could really become good. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I might uh, might have my own Anna Lee Waters <laughs> forming here, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> How cool would that be? Because actually, you know, now that I think about it, are there any high level, um, either mother son or father daughter mixed players? I don't. I mean, I I know that like uh, what's his name, Rusty Sobek and his son, they play together. I know that Anna Lee and her mom. Uh, Lee Waters play together, but I don't know of any like mixed doubles parents, you know, child. Do you know of any? I don't know of any. No. We Does anybody the out there in the, in the, the socials, do you guys know of any? Cause that would be cool if you guys were like, if you guys are like the first, the first ones to do that. Yeah. I don't know of anybody. So yeah. Anybody that's watching, let us know. Do you know of any? Cause uh, if not, I'm I'm going to make that happen. Nice. We're just going to sign cool. up for the Open next year. We're going to go to the U.S. That's Open, right. play in the Open. Yep. I don't care what skill skill level we're at. <laughs> yep, just go play in the Open. Who cares? <laughs> All right. That's cool, man. That must have been a really fun experience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we actually do have somebody interested in joining us. So I'd say we let's go over your the thing you want to talk about. And then uh, we had a video I think we should play. And then... Uh, Maybe have our guest join us. What do you think about that? Yeah, my, mine's going to be real quick. Um, I'm okay. actually, we're we're going to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, we are going to be there. My wife, dog, and me, we're all going. Um, we're going to be staying in Grand Rapids for a couple of weeks and then going to my cousin's wedding up in the Traverse City area. Um, and I think I talked about that, but I'm, and I, I don't remember if I talked about this or not before, because usually I'm at least two beers into this point in the show. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm going to be playing in the Michigan state games. Is that, is that what it's called? Michigan state games? I believe so. I'm not doing yep. that one. So I didn't, uh, I didn't look too much oh. into it. So I didn't, didn't memorize it, but that sounds about right. <laughs> well, two weeks from now, it's, I think that's Saturday. Um, so that would be what the 15th Nicole Miller and I are going to be playing together in that Nicole and I were supposed to play together in the tournament that Webby came down for, but it got rained out. Uh, but her and I were, the winners of Eddie versus Webby 2.5. Um, yeah. And Webby also played with her in that um, Midwest indoor champion. Why, why do these names have to be so complicated? Why can't it just be like <laughs> June pickleball tournament in Grand Rapids? Like, let's just call it right. that, you know? Right. 
Wow. Yeah, Nicole's awesome. Like we, her and I got into the bronze medal match during the Midwest Indoor Winter Pickleball Championships in Grand Rapids. Mm-hmm. Um, man, we were we were this close to winning the bronze. We uh, it was a best two out of three match. We won the first one easily. We lost the second one in a very close match, and then we ended up losing the third one in another very close match to lose the bronze medal. But man, we were close. I I was. I was uh I could I could taste the bronze in my mouth. That's how close we were. Yep. Yeah, she's good, man. I enjoy playing with her. She's a lot of fun to play with. She's very skilled. Uh, I think it's going to be a great time and maybe we'll have some other videos. I mean, I'll be I'll be doing at least one podcast from Grand Rapids. Might do a second, might do some live streaming. Who knows? You'll just have to wait and see. You'll just have to wait and see, guys. We never know. <laughs> so much going on. So much great stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of great stuff, uh, somebody recently posted something <laughs> on social media that, that I absolutely love. Um, a lot. Uh, some of you might know this person. Uh, his name is Billy Reader, and he recently made a little song parody and released a video of it. And uh, let's just go ahead and play the video. Oh yeah. So damn funny. I love it. Yeah. He cracks me up, man. His stuff is <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> like what do you know the yeah. best part is like he's he's in his car and that car kind of pulls up next to him. You could see, and I was like, What what do you think that person is thinking as they look over and they see this guy right. r- rapping into a camera wearing <laughs> I don't even know what kind of hat that is. Something something for like the the backwoods of Louisiana with the big old beard, like Oh, I could just imagine what that car was thinking. Right. Oh, man, that is great stuff, though. Um, and he actually did something else that was super funny recently. And it was a spoof of a commercial that Kyle Yates recently did. And I think to get the full effect, we should play the Kyle Yates commercial first. So uh, let's go ahead and roll it. What do I need to be a champion? Power. Speed. And the right paddle. For me, it's the Bantam EXL by Paddletech. <laughs> All right, so. Now that you have that fresh in your mind, let's go ahead and watch what Billy Reader did. I need to be a champion. Power. 
power. Speed. And the right knack. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That it's... is funny, funny stuff. I, I love that it's like and the right snack. Like so bl- right. <laughs> blatantly dubbed over, but I'm glad it was like that. I think if it would have sounded like it was professionally added, it wouldn't have been as funny. Right. Oh man, but I, yeah, I, I love the stuff he's doing. However, like part of me is a little mad at him because uh, it's kind of like an inside thing. But you and I were talking about doing a spoof of that commercial, and then like short, shortly after he releases that, so it's like ah, oh, we can't do that now. That was too good. There's no like way it, we can top that. <laughs> I feel like it was like a day or two after because the, the first time I yeah. saw that commercial was um, so we, we had a commercial in the pickleball global challenge cup live stream. And that paddle tech Cal Yates one was there as well. And so anybody that watched it probably saw our commercial and that commercial like a thousand times. And so I, you know, I saw it and I saw it and I saw it and I was like, how fun would it be to spoof that with, you know, like something that has to do with Eddie and Webby. Uh, and then I reached out to Webby and then the next day, boom, Billy drops that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I loved the idea. I already had the wheels going in my head. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, we could do this. We could do that. And then he did that. And it was like, oh, this is it's perfect. Like, we can't do this now. What's funny is on their YouTube page, this video is actually from maybe a year or two ago. Do you know that? Oh, really? I No, I didn't. The first time I ever saw it was during the Pickleball Global Cup Challenge. Me too. Or the first time I remember seeing it was then. But yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it's from a couple of years ago. In fact, I'll look up the exact date on that one because it's very important. While you look at that, I'm going to, I'm going to pour my beer in the microphone because I feel like this beer is pouring like very professional sounding. Listen okay. to this. Could you hear that? Did it sound like the beer commercial when they pour beer in the commercials or could you not hear it? Uh, I could not hear it. Damn it. You blew it. It was so good. In in my in the real world, in my ears, it sounded like a like, perfect <laughs> professional pour. We haven't done mouth sounds in a while. Like you haven't gargled the beer in a very long time. You know that? You know what? That is a great point. And I think uh I think while we wait to see if somebody wants to join us as a guest, I think I will do a mouth gargle. Okay. Um so Earlier in the show, or during episode 41, I was drinking the M43 Tart Strawberry. That is all gone. So now I am drinking something we've had on the show before. One of my go-tos for when I want a nice lighter beer, but a nice IPA is the uh, Founders All Day IPA. That's what I just poured. Mm. That's nice. Uh, I actually just poured a beer that I think I've drank on here before. It's similar. If I want uh, something good and flavorful, but maybe a little bit lighter, Cigar City Lager. Good beer. Nice. Very nice. And hey, I did look up that video. It's from March 9th, 2018. So it's, yeah, it's like a year and three months old at this point. Whoa. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I did not, uh, didn't, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, so what's, uh, what's the second big piece of pickleball stuff that's happened to you in the last week, right? Isn't that the last, I mean, it would have to be the last yeah, week. Just like, yeah, just, just in the last week. Um, so something I didn't even realize until Facebook alerted me about this is May 29th was the two year anniversary to the date of the first time I ever played pickleball. Okay. I liked it so much that I took a picture. I pl- I played um, my my wife and my two daughters and I. We went to these courts that I found uh, near my house, um, and I remember I I bought some of the cheapest wooden paddles I could find, and I just because I wanted to test out this sport because I know you had played it before. You had raved about it, um, so I bought these paddles, talked them into going with me, and absolutely loved it. And I took a, a family photo of all four of us there. And I shared it to the Facebook.com and I was like, oh, I just, just played pickleball for the first time ever. It was really fun. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I don't think I played it again for about another two or three months after that, just because I couldn't find people to play with. 
Um, but I mean, just, yeah, who who would have known two years later how much pickleball would play such a, a big role in my life, how much it would change my life? Um, it's crazy. I love that fact. But yeah, that's it was a pretty big milestone that I didn't even really realize if it hadn't been for Facebook saying uh, on this date two years ago, you posted this. It is funny how Facebook has become like the the source of remembering when things happened in your past, right? Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a bizarre phenomenon. I mean, social media has done so many things to affect our culture, but that's one of them. Oh, I yeah. know I have, I have shit that pops up all the time, and I was like, that was nine years ago? Like, you got to be kidding <laughs> Right. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of the things I like about it. I mean, there's definitely a lot that I hate about social media, but that's one of the things that I like is... Uh, things like that. Like I never would have realized had it not been for that Facebook post. You know, if we would have had social media in high school, do you know what else would have recently popped up? <laughs> What's that? That we graduated high school over 20 years ago. Oh my God. Right. Class of 99, 2019. It was sometime in May that we graduated, right? Oh shit. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Holy yep. shnikes. And now you feel old, huh? Yeah, that that's not right. 20 years ago, like I still feel like high school, like I, I remember most of it very, very vividly to where like it, it couldn't have been 20 years ago. It's not possible. Well, I mean, I remember high school, college. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of that. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you, man. 20 years ago seems like a long time. Are we are we doing a what do they call the reunion? Are they is that happening? I got something on Facebook about a potential reunion. I haven't heard any like actual like confirmation that something's going to happen. Um, hmm. I got a little side note question for you. Do you recall what browser is best for a guest to connect to us? From an iPhone? Yeah. Safari. Yep. What what if it's not iPhone? Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything. You you know you know that weird Android stuff. Yeah, I mean the person has an iPhone, so it doesn't matter. But I was just curious. <laughs> I was. <laughs> it's great. Just trying to strike up conversation yeah. while we wait because this is that well, awkward phase where like somebody is about to join us. But didn't didn't you have something? Didn't you have something you wanted to talk about also or something else? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but I did want to bring up. I just got a, We got a comment from Kenny Chow, which was very flattering, and we really thank you, Kenny, for this. Uh, you know, referring to us saying it was 20 years ago that we graduated high school. He says, I don't believe it can't be more than five years ago. That's very nice of him to say. Oh, nice. Um, nice. From a maturity level. Totally agree. <laughs> from, right. from, hey, you know, actually, now that I think about it, I feel like I'm in better shape now than I was maybe not when I graduated, but within a couple years of graduation, I think I feel like I'm in better shape now than I was when I was 20. What do you think? Absolutely. Like, uh, like I was in great shape in high school, but then after high school, I did absolutely zero <laughs> physical activity, <laughs> like no exercising, did nothing active yeah. for fun. It was just video games, work. And then I had my, my daughters at a pretty young age. So I just focused on doing stuff with them around the, at, at the house and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I put on quite a bit of weight over the years and, uh, yeah, I mean, in my 30s, like even before pickleball, like I just, I got a lot more active. Like I got into disc golf hardcore. Mm -hmm. I got into mountain biking. And then the last two years, pickleball. And surprisingly, even after all, like even those other very physical activities I was doing in my 30s, like nothing has caused me to lose weight like pickleball has just because I, I'm so addicted to it. I played as much as I possibly can and I sweat like crazy, get my heart rate going more than anything consistently. So it's just, yeah. The, the last two years, I like I, I definitely feel like at this point in time, I feel like I'm definitely in much better shape than I have since high school. Yeah, for sure. I I think that pickleball has been a catalyst for a lot of people. You know, I think Cass Gerke was on, and she she just recently passed the 80 pound loss threshold, which is which is pretty exciting. Um, I've seen some pictures from other people on Facebook who showed before and after when they started playing pickleball and. It's, it's so great to see all the health benefits that people are getting from it. And, you know, I think, I think weight is one indicator of your overall health, right? But it's definitely one of the biggest indicators of it. So if you can go out there, increase your activity and, uh, 
you know, and kind of get, um, you know, get your weight down, but also get your cardio up, get your strength up. I think it's going to be absolutely, you know, a, a huge benefit for people. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And it's, it's crazy how many people have, uh, just in a short amount of time have lost a lot of weight. Cause like I wasn't super big, but there are people, um, that were, that had like, uh, that were definitely a lot more overweight than they would like. And then after playing pickleball for a, a year or two, like it's just totally transformed them. Like it's, it's amazing. Like <laughs> no need to do like the Atkins diet, just do the pickleball diet, just right. play pickleball. <laughs> That's right. Pickleball uh, exercise plan, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Yep. Totally agree, man. It's a good plan. Um, I, I don't typically like to, to talk about a lot of personal stuff here. Um, but one thing that I am pretty proud of is in the last three and a half years, since my wife and I really made some very significant changes to our health, when it comes to what we eat, when it comes to exercise and activity, I've been able to pull 50 pounds off of me, uh, and, and do it in a very healthy, you know, methodical way by just making a lot of lifestyle changes. And I feel great, man. I think it's so cool. And and I definitely think pickleball was a catalyst the last year for it. Cause I've noticed that as I'm losing weight, uh, you, you hit plateaus, right? And it's like, every time I plateaued, I'd have to make a change and whether it was increased activity from, you know, exercising five days a week to six days a week or changing your food a little bit, or, you know, maybe try fasting or whatever. I'd always have to do these things. And then once I hit playing pickleball, I noticed that my food intake had to go up because I was playing pickleball so much. And I was replacing a lot of potential weight loss with muscle gain and stuff like that. But it's still been a very slow and and steady, uh, downward number on that scale and just past 50 pounds. And, you know, I got, I got, I, I have some more to go that I'm, you know, that I'm working towards, but super excited about that. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Like seriously, I, like I've, I've been able to witness your, your weight loss and, uh, it's, it's very impressive what you've done. No doubt. Thank you, man. Uh, it's, it's something you should definitely be proud of. And I think I, re- I recently sent you a picture that I found from, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it was like, maybe like eight, seven or eight years ago or something, maybe not even that long ago. And it like, <laughs> you are a totally different person from them. Like it was, it's pretty wild. I, you definitely, I feel like you should definitely do a before and after picture at some point to show like how far you've come. Cause it's, it's pretty damn impressive. Thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah. As soon as I saw that picture, I was actually, I was actually playing pickleball when you sent it and I showed some of my neighbors that I play with and they're like, that was you. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that was me with 50 pounds on me. Definitely was not the healthiest of a, uh, of a person. That's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, yeah, you've come a long way. Definitely something to be proud of. That's uh, mm-hmm. quite an accomplishment for sure. Yeah, mm. love it. And, uh, and yeah, and, uh, and definitely pickleball has definitely made it a lot easier to keep the weight off, I'm sure. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, oh, we have a comment from Kenny Chow. What do you guys think about Drake and the Raptors? Do you know, do you know about this story at all, Webby? I don't think so. All right. Drake's the, uh, like Drake, the rapper. Yeah. So, all right. God, I don't even know if I, if I can give justice to the story. Um, but he, (laughs) I, I, I think this is what he's talking about. Um, so obviously you guys know Drake, he's a Canadian superstar rapper, right? I think his, his real name is like Aubrey or something like that. Um, he's been a Raptors fan. I think like six, seven years ago, the Raptors made him oh, ambassador or, or something like that. And Kenny, I'm sorry if you're listening, man, I might be totally butchering this here. <laughs> um, but he, I, th- they were playing the bucks and I know that he was taunting a lot of the people. Uh, he, he was giving a back rub to, the head coach, um, God, what's that guy's name? Uh, Phil Nick. Jackson. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Nick like something. one of the only NBA coaches. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, he basically, uh, there, the, the question out there is like, 
is his behavior good? Is it embarrassing? Is it sportsmanlike? Um, and and to give my opinion, listen, having him there as as an ambassador to the Raptors, I think is huge. I think he has done a lot to get people involved in the game. Listen. I think there are a ton of people out there, especially NBA fans, who are going to not really have a tie to anybody in particular, any team in particular, but are going to see that Drake is wearing a Raptors jersey and they're going to be like, oh, I like Drake for his music or whatever. So I'm going to become a Raptors fan because of that. Uh, so I think I think he has done some good. I think that it's a little it's a little over the top, right? Uh, and And I think, he should probably calm it down a little bit. I don't really believe that if you're courtside that you should be able to make an impact on a one-on-one -on -one level with somebody playing on the court. Now, these are pros, so they should be able to block it out fairly easily, but I still think that it if if he really is getting getting that confrontation with them, it should it should not happen. So, yeah. Based on that, what do you think? Yeah, it sounds a bit ridiculous to me. Yeah. To be honest, I, I didn't I wasn't listening to most of your story. I I was uh oh, really? I heard the word I heard the name Drake and I thought it would be funny to uh, debut. Do you remember like we remember we did a a, a hip hop co like a, a collection of hip hop song parodies that we never released? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one of them was a Drake song and what if should I play it right now from my phone or would that just be stupid? Go for it. Let's see. Let's see how it sounds. If it sounds like crap, then we'll stop. All right. So speaking of Drake, here is a total. <laughs> this is an unreleased track that we, like, we worked on a very long time ago. And never released it. So anybody that remembers the song "Hotline Bling" from Drake, this is a, a pickleball parody of that song. You used to play me at pickleball. But lately you don't play at all. Why won't you play me at pickleball? Is it because I shut you out? That game about a month ago. I beat you 11 to 0. That game about a month ago. I beat you 11 to 0. Ever since my epic victory, you... Started avoiding my calls and seemed stressed out. I heard you went straight home and started to pout. Dude, you need to man up and forget about all about that time I wasted you. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> well, um, Kenny, what are your thoughts, man? Throw it in the chat because I'd like to, I'd like to hear other opinions on this as well. But um, thank you, Webby, for playing that. Drake. Yeah, so Kenny said, short story, Webby, he's basically always getting over involved with the games. He's on the court versus in the stands and asserts himself into the games a bit. So yeah, if that's the case, there there's no room for that. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Come on. Yeah. Um actually this is a kind of funny personal story. It has nothing to do with pickleball, but uh Tom Green, the comedian who Webby and I were huge fans of 20 years ago, like he was I thought he was the funniest guy in the world. I thought the Tom Green show was one of those original best shows. Uh, I thought the movies that he made were hilarious. I just love the guy. He performed at this comedy club right here in Naples, which is a very small, intimate, fun comedy club that ironically pulls a lot of great talent. Uh, and he performed and, and he did his comedy bit, his stand-up bit. My wife and I went, had a great time. But in there, he brought up the Raptors. And he also brought up... Jack Nicholson, who is always at the Lakers games. And, you know, apparently, you know, he's he's always on the sidelines. He's always doing that. And they were trying to draw a <laughs> yeah. parallel between what Drake was doing and what Jack Nicholson was doing. And I just, it seemed like a little bit of a stretch. I don't think there's a whole yeah. lot of connection there. But anyway, I thought right. that was kind of funny. I do, I do remember used to see uh, Jack Nicholson all the time, like, the fact that we haven't seen him in a while, that kind of worries me. Like, how is Jack doing these days? I haven't seen Jack Nicholson in forever. Well. Um, Jack, if you're if you're watching, uh, leave us a message so we know you're okay. I'll work and no I know play. Jack, uh, Make Jack a Jack dull boy. What? What is it? Yeah. Uh, what's Jack, he saying? Jack Pickleson. Jack Pickleson <laughs> is a fan of ours. He's left yeah. messages on uh, Twitter before. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh, Kenny just responded. He said, I think if he stayed off the court and just heckled and acted like a normal fan, 
then it'd be fine. Him coming onto the court and getting involved with players is a bit crazy. Picture a normal person doing that. They'd be they'd be batoned and handcuffed in seconds. Uh, it somewhat opens a floodgate towards what what has happened in tennis with fans with fan and player attacks. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a good point. If it wasn't Drake, would would they allow it? No, absolutely not. Oh, it for sure. Happen. No, if, if yeah, if, if you or I like got on the court to like voice our opinions about what was going on with the game we would be we would be tackled right we would be uh strip searched and then taken out of the uh out of the arena even with the millions of fans and followers that we have we would still we'd be as kenny put batoned and handcuffed in seconds for sure right oh yeah i mean we've got millions of fans but anybody that isn't familiar with pickleball might not know who we are so the, uh, the NBA fans probably wouldn't know who we are, so then security would just destroy us, kick us out, and not let us voice our concerns about what uh, what Isaiah Thomas or Bill Lambeer are doing on the on the basketball court. Are they still playing? <laughs> we already talked about the fact that we graduated high school 20 years ago. That comment there just showed your age again once. <laughs> so bad. I love the bad boys, though, man. The Detroit bad boys, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. worm, Dennis Rodman. When was the last time you went to a Pistons game? Was it like a year ago when you did that video? Over a year ago? Uh, yeah. Yeah, last time I was at a Pistons game was the, during the video where I took a free throw shot. So if you click here... <laughs> no, if you, so it'll be more oh, like man. here. Are you we telling me I'm going to have to go back now and add a card <laughs> to this? Yeah, so now to, we're going to yep. have to add a card. So yeah, we're going to add a card right there. And it'll it'll take you to the video of when I took a free throw shot at the Detroit Pistons game last year. You're not gonna want to miss it. It was pretty epic. <laughs> You're not gonna want to miss it for sure. Um, you know, that I was still back have... before we had any subscribers, so like probably nobody's even seen that video yet. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I mean, we have 349 now, so. Yeah. 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 Speaking I need of to, that, like... if you guys like this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button or click the like button and then subscribe. And if you want to be notified of our videos, click that bell button so you never miss one on YouTube. Don't worry about Facebook. Go to YouTube. Right? That is exactly right. And uh, <laughs> I don't think our guest is going to is going to be able to join us. They, they're having okay. technical issues. Kenny, well, why don't we t- you should join us. Are you still watching, Kenny? You should join yeah. us. You out there, Kenny? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the the parallel between Drake messing with the players on his team and how you're saying that applies to tennis. I'm I'm curious to uh to see the parallel. So if uh if you want to reach out to Webby, he'll get you connected with with all the deets. Oh, for um, sure. I can hook you up, bro. And if you can't, no big deal. Um w- one thing I wanted to talk about is Webby, do you remember if I've mentioned that I'm in a league uh, at Pickleball Global, which is at Pickleball and Tennis US in Bonita Springs, where the Pickleball Global Challenge Cup was? Did I have I talked about that yet? Um, you've told me about it, but I don't think you've talked about it on the show. So if you, I think now would be a perfect time to talk about it. Cool. There's not a whole lot that I want to be able to talk about. I just think it's cool that Pickleball Global put on a tournament. I'm on a team with three other people. So there's four people. It's two men, two women. And one day a week you play and you play against another team. And there's eight teams total in our, in our league. And how it works is you play four matches. Each match is one game to 15 points and it's two mixed doubles matches. And then one women's doubles and one men's double. So basically each person gets to play twice during that time. And then you're awarded um, points based on how well you do. And then at the end of the season, there's a tournament. So ultimately, all of your league play, all it does is it helps with your seeding when it comes to the tournament that's at the end of the league, which is really cool because then we get a chance, excuse me, to actually play in a tournament. And the teams that have the highest number of points get a few rounds of buys. And so... It's really going to help because there's one court at Pickleball and Tennis US. So if you have eight teams, each team has a combination, uh, like four combinations, you can imagine how many games there's going to have to be. So if you're one of the teams that is lowest on there, you're going to have a long day to be able to try and get to gold, right? Because we'll probably have like, you know, if our team wins, like we're winning a lot, we're going to have two, three rounds of buys. 
So they'll be there at seven in the morning and we get to like sleep in and have lunch before we even have to start to play. So kind of a cool concept. I'm really excited about it. Uh, nice. I've the, the downside is, and I kind of feel bad about it. I'll be in grand rapids for the two and a half weeks, which means I'll have to miss three weeks of it, but we have somebody, uh, covering for me. So that's good. Yeah. It sounds like a very cool time. I've watched a, a few of your games on the live pickleball global feed so that's very cool to be able to see um yeah, it's fun. do you uh, does it make you nervous at all knowing that the match is streamed or do you not care about that or what do you think no i so i get nervous as it is anytime it's like competitive play whether it's league play or tournament play um it's it's one of those things that i'm still trying to work through and, and battle through uh so i already have that level of nerves the the fact that we're on video i feel like just because of the podcast and because of the fact that we we basically show like our shittiest plays in the world on our videos of when we play in <laughs> tournaments. Everybody right. knows that we we suck a lot when we play, right? We they they already know <laughs> deep down our worst shots. So that doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I think it I think it actually encourages me because sometimes I'm always like, hey, cool, that shot's gonna be on video. Cause the other thing I do, Webby, is as soon as I get home at night, I immediately go back and I pull up the stream and I start watching it. And I'll actually like download and edit the clips where I played. So that way I can review it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I love doing that too. Like every time I record my gameplay, um, even if I tell myself, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to wait a week before I edit this. <laughs> um, it never fails that that night. I've got to watch it all and see how I did, like see how it looked when I played. Um, but to be honest, like one of the only times I've ever been live streamed while playing is when I won gold that, that, uh, yeah that YMCA tournament in Ohio, my partner, Eddie, um, not you, not this Eddie, not you, not this Eddie, this Eddie, that's always over on this side of me instead of that side of me. Um, anyways, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a stupid joke. That was stupid. Let's, um, let's cut that out of the video. Can we edit I that didn't part get out? It. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, it was I, like, I, yeah. like you're over there. The other Eddie is always over there. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not get that now? But anyway, yeah, he live streamed all those matches and we went undefeated. So maybe that's the maybe that's the secret. And maybe we just need to record all of our matches live stream. Yep. Add some extra pressure and that'll make me uh do better. I don't it, to me it doesn't matter. Like I that I don't know why. That just does not matter to me. I don't care if I have a thousand people watching. I don't care if I'm being live streamed. I don't care if I'm being recorded. It doesn't it really does not matter to me. But I think it's because I already, I'm already, like I said, working through getting over just anxiety and competitive play to begin with. Because man, when I go do social play, I, I do just fine. I can hold my own with people that are far beyond better than me when it comes to the rating. I enjoy it. I do well. It's a great time. <laughs> as soon as it's like league play, I don't know what the hell happens to me or, or <laughs> tournament play, but I get, I get tight and I'm just smacking the ball really hard. And it takes, <laughs> takes a good eight points for me to even like just kind of get to normal, but, but I, I'm getting better. I'm finding that every time I play competitively, it doesn't take me as long to get to that point. Like when I played at the U S open, I was definitely nervous the first match, but after that I was totally calm and cool. The rest of it. Nice. Yeah. I, I still definitely struggle with it. Um, I, I have found like if I do tournaments like kind of back to back or like without much time in between, it definitely helps. Um, but I'm doing a, a big tournament later this month, the Great Lakes Regionals in Kalamazoo. And that's a big one. It's actually a, a nationals qualifying tournament as a matter of fact, and it'll be my first tournament in over a month. So I feel like when that, when that time comes, I feel like the nerves are definitely going to be kicking in hardcore again. Um, but man, that the training that I had with DJ, um, I, unfortunately I have not played pickleball since I had the training. Um, I really want to play, like I'm, I've like, I really want to test out like what I've learned in an actual game. Cause I haven't played an actual yeah. game since I got the training. Um, but the stuff that he told me like made so much sense and I feel like it's going to help me hardcore. Um, I mean, I don't even want to talk about the biggest thing that I changed yeah. in my game because of the training. Cause I want to wait until everybody sees the video footage. Cause then I can talk about that in depth, but yeah, he just, there was like one thing in particular that he pointed out that he recommended that I try changing. He said like, I don't, 
definitely don't have to change this, but he told me something to try and I liked it. And uh, I think it's definitely going to help my gameplay. Uh, but you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait until I reveal that part of the video before I discuss it. My lips are sealed, bro. My lips are sealed. How? Yeah, that that's so cool. Like, how cool is that that you're working with DJ now on that stuff, man? Like, just so good to get professional lessons or coaching, right? Yeah, like it, like I, I didn't really know what to expect. Like I always, like I always knew getting one-on-one -on -one training would be awesome, but like I didn't, I didn't realize it would be that awesome and that beneficial. It's like just, like I didn't think like two hours wouldn't be enough for me to get like that much out of it. But like, really, there were three main topics that we went over, three main things to work on, and. Those three things I think are going to help me greatly, and I can't wait to uh, test them out on the pickleball court. Was this like your first official lesson with a professional instructor outside of like people helping you at rec play and things like that? Yeah, other than just tips that tips during rec play, I've never had any kind of training whatsoever. So this was was the first taste of that at all. Uh, I didn't know what to expect, and I, I was blown away at how good it was um, like DJ is just, he's, he's friggin' awesome, man. Like the way, like he just describes things in such a way that it, just, it makes so much sense. Uh, he makes, he makes sure it makes sense to you before moving on to the next thing. Um, and then like, like we're, we're dinking as he's giving me tips and things to adjust. And it's just, yeah, I, I, I really can't say enough about it. Like DJ is such a great instructor and I'm sure, Everybody that's part of the uh, the level up pickleball camps, I'm sure they all have to be um, have to reach like a have to be a, a certain level of instructor to be able to even qualify to be part of that program. So that's why earlier in the episode I was saying if you ever get a chance to do one of those pickleball camps, to to definitely do it if you have the means to do so. Because man, it's just the their their training style it's it's top notch. It's awesome. Yeah. Did, were any of the tips that DJ gave you things that other people have given you during rec play when you've gotten tips before? Um, yeah, actually it was a couple of the things. There are things that people pointed out to me, but like, like when you're in rec play, usually it's like in the middle of a game and you don't really have time to really dwell on it and really focus on it. And then if I do try to change it, like in the middle of a game, it just totally screws me up. Um, but like, yeah, he, he pointed out things that other people have pointed out to me before, but the main difference is that he showed me how to fix it. And that's like people have like tried to give me tips on how to fix it before, but it didn't really and it just didn't really work. But like he he gave me methods on how to address it in ways that made much more sense and ways that I think will definitely stick with me. Good. That's why he's a professional and everybody else are just people that are trying to help you, which don't get me wrong. I love when people try and help each other at rec play, but sometimes it's like, shut up. I don't want to hear. Yeah. I don't want to hear your stupid method right now. Like, right. It's, especially sometimes yeah. when you like, I like, I know sometimes when I'm doing the right shot or when I'm doing the wrong shot. And it's sometimes if I miss the, the right shot, like if I miss a third shot drop or, you know, I try and do a cross court and I go a little long, and somebody tries to give me the advice to do something else other than that. And it's like, I, I know the game better than you. Shut up. Yes, I agree. Right. I should have hit that shot. But what you're telling me to do is stupid. It's suicide. I hate that right. too. <laughs> yeah. So we might, actually, uh, we might actually have somebody joining us in just a moment. Not who I originally thought was going to join us. Okay. Um. And it might just be for a few minutes. Okay. But cool. But I think good. it'll be awesome. Uh, everybody if it works out. Everybody's sick and tired of hearing about us anyway. So <laughs> right. um, let's see here. I'm sick and tired of it. That's for damn sure. There you what are. About that? Yeah. Oh, there we go. All right. We, we did eat. Yeah. Okay. So you can see me and hear me now? Yep. We got we both audio and video, man. Okay. Good. Because I. And showcasing my new glasses that I just bought, and I was hoping that uh, you guys would be able to see them. <laughs> I like them. I can man. see them. It's, they're nice. They're thicker framed than usual, aren't they? A little bit thicker. Framed. They are. Um, 
Yeah, Eden Eden Lika, the other Monarch sponsored player, told me I needed to upgrade my glasses. He, he you know, he basically was was getting on to me about wearing those little glasses. So I, I bought some thicker <laughs> framed, a little bit bigger glasses. Nice. I dig it. I, I, I'm a, I'm personally a fan of the thicker framed glasses. So yeah, very, very I chic. Is that a term? Chic? I, it, is. it is. It is a chic. <laughs> we'll go with that. Shabby chic even. Isn't, isn't yeah. shabby chic a thing too? I don't know what that means, but I think it's a thing. Let, let's roll with it. I like shabby yeah. chic. Uh, so welcome to the uh, fashion the fashion hour with Eddie and Webby with our guest Scott Golden here. Um, yeah, we, we we wanted Scott to come on to uh, to talk about his new glasses and maybe, uh, dude, you you kind of dropped a bomb on on the world this afternoon or this evening, man. Yes, uh, Simone and Chad and I have been keeping it kind of under wraps for a couple months now. We had to kind of work out all the details. And of course, with my schedule being so busy and their schedule being so hectic and crazy, um, the Atlanta Open was the first time that we've I've seen her um, since the U.S. Open, where we kind of finalized the deal and everything. And so um, I was going to make an announcement on the on social media, and then but I counseled with her a little bit on it, just kind of said, hey, what do you think? And she said, why don't we just wait until we're in the same area live and we'll just do a big announcement. So she brought a t-shirt for me and we kind of played it like the, uh, the high school student that was getting recruited by, you know, like Clemson or Alabama or some college that, you know, <laughs> I had to put the shirt on and make it official. Yeah. I thought it was cool that it was like, it was almost like a draft setup where you put the shirt on and everything like that was that was a cool way to do it. But for those of, for those of our viewers that might not know the two or three of them that don't know, talk about what it is that's happening, man. Sure. Sure. Um, I've, you know, been, been in the sport for about two and a half years now and I've been working really hard to just, um, put myself in a position or a situation where I could continue to do pickleball full time because I love this sport. I love being a part of the sport and I want to do this for a long time. And so, part of the process of trying to go um, in head first and become, uh, you know, a full-time pickleball player. Uh, but not just that, but also um, be able to make money and actually make a living doing this. Um, as great of a setup as I have with Monarch and as fortunate as I am to be able to do what I do right now, I still want to have some steady income coming in all the time. And so basically what's going to happen is I'm moving down July 1st to Bonita Springs, Florida, where Peak Performance Academy uh, is, where Simone and Chad teach out of at the Bonita Springs YMCA. They have eight dedicated courts there, and they basically asked me to uh, come on staff full time uh, and help not only with some of the leagues and some of the, you know, some of the business side, you know, maybe putting information into their system, um, adding new clients, maybe running the pickleball leagues in the evenings, stuff like that, just kind of some of the business detail stuff. But also I'm going to be teaching and instructing full-time during the peak season, which peak season for anybody that doesn't know, um, all the snowbirds from up north will come down to Naples area in, in that vicinity, as Eddie well knows. Um, they get there usually sometime in October, November time frame, and they go through the end of basically April, maybe middle of May, and then they all head back up. So the peak season is when I'll be teaching the most, and then during the down season, the the low key season is where I'll be working. You know, maybe twenty twenty five hours a, a week, but I'll be helping more like with some of the the business stuff. That's so great, man. That's so cool. First of all, I'm yeah, just very cool, man. I'm so psyched for you. It sounds like it sounds to me like a perfect fit. Uh, it still gives you the freedom and the flexibility to be able to do what you're doing. But like you said, in addition, be able to make a living out of pickleball, which has kind of been your goal. But personally, I'm excited, man, because you're going to be my neighbor down here, man. That's that's why I took the job, Eddie. I was like, <laughs> you know what? If I can get into the same zip code as uh, Eddie, then I I'm in. Let's do this. Yeah, I love it, man. That's awesome. You know, and you were it, talking it, about the, the whole note. snowbird thing. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was like, you're you're talking about the the snowbird thing and how Addy is definitely familiar with how that works. It it definitely affects me big time too because I live where all the snowbirds leave during the winter months. So like, there's uh there's like a few months of the year where like the people the good players are no longer around. So I'm stuck with playing with the other people <laughs> that that stay here in Michigan all year. And uh, now there's there's still good players here, but there's uh the amount of people that go to the rec play locations that I go to definitely uh, cuts in half because of all the people that do the snowbird thing and head down to Florida. Yeah, it's amazing how many people I've met in Pickleball when I ask them where they live. They say six months I live in New York, the other six months I live down in Florida. It's, it's really astonishing the amount of people that actually do that. Um, most of them are obviously retired folks that have built their their careers and and are usually typically retired. You do meet occasionally the the couple that is working full time still, but has been um, basically transitioning, going back and forth for a while. But it's still still working. A lot of them work remotely, you know, from a computer or something like that. Very flexible. Um, I love it though, guys. And, and, and as a side note. Um, I'm excited because I, I get to be around Simone and some some of the really good players, um, which is just going to help my game even more. You know what I mean? It's just getting around that environment. Um, it's what I've been wanting to try to do for about two years since I got into the sport. Um, as much as I love Alabama, I've been there for 20 years. Uh, I felt like it was the right timing and the right chapter in my life to be able to pull the trigger and do something like this. Yes, it's a big deal and it's a big move, to, to uproot from Alabama and go down to Florida. But I'm actually, after my divorce, guys, I really simplified my life. And it's it's not going to be that complicated. I'm going to basically um, move down there in July. I've actually already found a place. And this is the icing on the cake. I've already found a place. Um, I already know what it's going to cost for everything included, which is very, very reasonable. Um, the place is right on the water, on the beach. And um, it's within walking distance of the Benita Springs YMCA where I'm going to be teaching out of. So it couldn't have worked out any better. Man. Nice. That's a, that's a cool area too. The whole Naples, Benita Springs, Fort Myers, like Southwest Florida is, it's a place to be. It's why I moved here. Cause I absolutely love it here. Yeah. This is really just a dream, dream job come true. And, um, just excited that Chad and Simone wanted to take a chance on me. Um, hopefully I don't let them down. And um, I hope to be, you know, working with them for a long time. And um, I'm just excited, man. I love teaching. I love people. And, and um, it's just a really good fit in my mind. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, I, I get a chance to work with them a little bit for the Florida Grand Slam. Chad, Simone, and, and all the crew at Peak Performance Pickleball Academy. Location is great, as you know. Uh, and they're just amazing people. Like, I, I think, I think you're just a, a, such a great fit for what they're looking to do and what they do. It's uh, like, it, it, here's the thing, Scott, I had some theories in my head when you said you were going to be moving down to the Benita Springs area. I had some theories about like what you were going to be doing or where you were going to be going. And part of me hoped that what you're announcing right now was actually going to be the end result. So when you said it, I was like, yes, I'm so psyched about that. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I mean, I literally sometimes I, I, I still feel like it's kind of surreal. It hasn't really set in exactly just yet. Um, but July 1st, I'm going to be full time, guys. And that's, um, I have no kids, n you know, nothing to hold me. So I'm just going to uproot, move down there, and just live each day um, excited to wake up and, and teach pickleball. And if you're out there, live in that area, or you're coming down, um, come see us. I think it's going to be a, a really, really good time. So nice, man, man. That's, that's very cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very happy for you. I mean, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. I'm glad that you're able to keep living the dream there. The, the pickleball dream, super cool. And, uh, I've got to tell you, uh, one thing I've never really talked about before, uh, before we ever decided to go live, I remember before I even really knew who you were, um, I remember you doing posts on the, the pickleball forum and, and stuff like that. Like just, just going live chatting with people about pickleball. And I just thought that was so cool. And, uh, I was, just thought that was like, it's such, such a ballsy thing to do just to, to go live and just talk to somebody unplanned about pickleball. 
And I knew that was something we would never do because the <laughs> thought of going live sounded absolutely horrible to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, I love doing it now. I love doing it now. But at the time, I was like, oh, man, I could never I could never go live and talk to people because who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, seriously, like you've been such a great ambassador for the sport. So I love the fact that you're able to to continue like pursuing a, a career in pickleball. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys. And I appreciate you guys letting me come on with, with you and just, you know, bring everybody up to speed, including you guys. I, I kind of kept it a little bit low key. I was trying not to tell a ton of people. Some of my best friends knew. Um, obviously, my, my brother, my twin brother, Chris, knew as well, um, as well as my family. But outside of that, my closest friends and um, my family, nobody really knew exactly what was going on, probably. Um, but, but I mean, I did give a couple hints when I was on with you guys last time that there's some big stuff coming. But um, I, I tell you, the other thing I want to do is I, I want to give credit to Monarch, Riley Burgess, and Dick Sporting Goods that have been the last year. They literally, I don't want to over-dramatize this, but they have helped change my life in such a, such a positive and such a great way. And a lot of the opportunities I feel like that have come my way in the last year is because they were willing to take a chance on me a year ago when nobody else was really willing to do that. And they kind of saw, um, in their minds, I was, I, I've been told this by them. It's not that I'm, I'm not making these words up. Like, I was the perfect fit for what they were trying to accomplish, um, not only from a pickleball standpoint, but also just from the way I go about doing things on social media. Um, they just felt like it was a really good fit for them. And I couldn't be happier. And when I told them about this uh, opportunity, they could have easily shut it down, told me, no, that's going to affect you know stuff that you're doing with us. But in, instead, what they did is they said, absolutely we are in support of what you're doing. We want to do everything in our power to help you continue to be a part of Pickleball full time. And it's just so refreshing refreshing to be a part of a company that really has my best interest at heart. And not everybody can say that. I'll be real honest, not everybody can say that. And we have a special group. It's, it's me, Eden, Lika, Riley Burgess, Brandon, um, and then a couple of people key people but they really do have my best interest at heart and when i when i thought that they might shut this down i just couldn't believe that they were like no we'll we'll figure it out like you're gonna have to do some better planning so basically during the summer season is going to be my travel time um i'll just have to basically take care of my business with simone and chad down there and then i'll be able to still jump on flights or jump in the car and go to tournaments still it's just not going to be as sporadic and like right now i'm playing the tournament every every weekend you know what i mean like mm -hmm. so it's just gonna be a little different scenario all right well yeah, that's cool and you know you brought up a lot of names that i got to meet at the u.s open uh riley i spent a lot of time with him had a couple beers with him super cool guy brandon i got to play that the with the giant uh paddles at the the monarch booth uh great guy and you know i i and i'm, I'm not just saying this scott but I would sit down and I would talk to them for a long period of time and they would share with me how grateful they are that you became part of the company, what you're doing for the brand and how you're exactly what they were looking for to be able to try and get the Monarch name out there and, and get it to the level that we've already seen it, you know, get to. And so it's just, I just want to tell you, man, like they were legitimately thrilled with what's going on. Well, we've talked about this before on the show. I mean, it's gotta be a good fit for both, both parties. If it's just a good fit for one side and not the other, ultimately it's not going to work out in the long run. But when I met Riley a year ago at the U.S. Open in 2018, I just I didn't know exactly how everything was going to pan out, but I just had a good feeling. And I think he walked away from that that initial meeting, this feeling the same way that hey, we're not we don't know every step that this is going to take and how to get there exactly, but let's lock arms, let's figure this out. And up to that point. Um, Dick Sporting Goods had never signed any type of athlete for for anything for any of the sports that they represent. So this was, it was a big deal. I mean, he had to go to bat for me, but also to I mean, he had to go to bat for just the idea of sponsoring somebody, investing money and resources into a, a player. You know, um, 
but he did a phenomenal job. I'm talking about Riley Burgess. I cannot say enough good stuff about this guy. He's a young guy. You know, he's less than 30 years old. I think he's 28, 29 years old. The guy is just an absolute mastermind when it comes to this kind of stuff. He put a blueprint together that had never been created before. He took it to the executives at the top of Dick Sporting Goods, and he was able to convince them to take a chance on it on this um, program. And I believe over the course of the last year, they're on board now. Where before, like they they really didn't think it was going to be a good idea. They were very hesitant to even pull the trigger, and now they're really getting behind pickleball. They're getting behind the the brands, not just Monarch, but all the pickleball brands growing and becoming a bigger presence in Dick Sporting Goods uh, stores all over the country. Uh, that's awesome. Great company. Very cool nice. stuff that they're doing. You know, Scott, I, I I've gone to Dick's. Uh, two or three times since you were last on, hoping that one of these times I was going to show up and I was going to see like a big cardboard cut out of you holding the new paddle, but still nothing, man. Same here. Nothing yet. Same thing I'm, here too. I, I go, every time I go there, guys, I look for it. <laughs> I, I, I will be working on that behind the scenes until we get that going. Um, I did have a good idea, or at least what I thought was a good idea. Um, and I brought it to them and it's still something that's going to take some time, but you know how they have those at the end caps? Sometimes they'll have like a uh, Bass Pro Shop. During, in the fishing, fishing, fishing section, they'll sometimes have somebody like doing a little two-minute video where it just kind of repeats. I thought that'd be really cool to like have me or somebody else that represents. It could be Eden. It could be me. It could be Riley. Somebody that could be on that end cap with the video just kind of replaying, talking about pickleball, maybe some basic um, – rules or things about that i thought that would be cool but um it's not there yet but maybe down the road we can get that worked out i think that'd be amazing well i think that the number of sales that dick sporting goods will will see or should see from pickleball might drive that so guys go out there pick up your uh pick up your monarch stuff from from dicks man because every time i'm there they have a good good selection of pickleball stuff there that's for sure yeah, yeah and Eddie, on my bucket list, I want to, when my paddle officially comes out in the stores, I know that they're going to put it in the Naples, Dick's Sporting Goods down there in Naples. Mm -hmm. You and I, when it gets released, we need to go down there in person together and, and go live and officially, like, I may even buy my own paddle just that, and just like put it in a glass <laughs> case or something. Let's do it, man. <laughs> I, I was actually yes. just there yesterday. I was just there yesterday to get a, a pair of shorts. So yeah, absolutely, man. Let's do it. You've got to. You've got to do it. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, we've, we do have a couple of comments here on social media. Uh, Joel Phillips says, Scotty, I should be going directly to sleep, but here we are with Eddie and Webby. Thanks for tuning in, Joel. I wonder and if he's then, tired. Uh, did, did, Joel, did you play in the tournament this weekend? Did you play, Joel? Comment in the comments section below and we'll uh, we'll find out the answer to Scott's question while we wait for that there's another comment from Kenny Chow he says Scott you have to talk about the Tyrol shoes it looks like the outsole is soft rubber like a basketball shoe yours look like yours looked pretty beat up this weekend too do you know what he's talking about there I do I do yeah I just uh, worked out a deal with Tyrol pickleball they are a Canadian shoe company that specifically designed a pickleball shoe for pickleball players. Um, the quick story, the quick version of this is Ke Kevin Huckle um, retired from 30 plus years in the shoe industry, working for a huge corporate shoe company. Um, he, he lives in Canada and he doesn't play pickleball personally, but his wife does. And he was at a pickleball tournament watching his wife play one day. And he just, you know, like me being in landscaping, every, every host home I go to, I, I secretly judge their landscaping. I don't tell them that, but the truth is the landscaper never, never not checks out the landscape. But um, he was checking out all the shoes at the tournaments and he's just like, man, there's some really crappy shoes that people wear out here. And um, so he's retired. He's got some resources and he's got a bunch of knowledge about how to create shoes. And he researched about what the movements are. And he got with um, Simone and Chad. 
and he basically would would he created the initial pair of shoes he sent it to them they tested them got feedback and he kept tweaking it kept tweaking it and a couple of the major things that separate a regular tennis shoe from this tyrol pickleball shoe is that it's got a heel lock at the back of the foot where when i actually pull my shoe off and it the suction kind of pulls away from my heel so it, it stabilizes your heel so it doesn't slide around and create blisters and things like that also it's got a wide toe box and a taller toe box than a normal tennis shoe so all the starting and stopping and all that movement you're not jamming your toes up into the front of your shoe and when i first started i was wearing shoes that were too didn't have a wide enough toe box and they weren't um tall enough and I was jamming my toes into that front of my shoe and creating um, issues where I would lose my toenails. They would turn black and blue and they would literally fall off. That sounds disgusting, but a lot of people yeah. have that issue. Yeah. And so they created this shoe specifically for those movements. And then also anybody like Zane Navratil or any of these guys that, that they're really quick on the court and they slide their, their – um, they kind of turn their foot sideways and slide – he created a thick rubber piece right there to keep it airing down um, too soon. So that's the that's the good stuff about the shoe. What Kenny Chow was saying is that the bottom outsole that he originally created was a little too soft. And so it does wear a little quicker on the tennis surface. So what they're doing is they just signed a contract with Vibram Soles. And Vibram is a company that creates um tires they're a tire manufacturer they're also um responsible if you go to dick sporting goods and you take some hiking boots and turn them over you'll see that these hardcore thick soles um, of these hiking boots are made by a company called vibram so he just signed a deal with vibram and this the new edition um not with a thicker um rubbery type of sole that's not going to wear down as fast on the outdoor surface and then they're going to basically transfer that original shoe into an indoor model. So you can play on the hardwood floors. Like Webby, you could you could buy one of those indoor pairs and you could wear it on the hardwood and it would last you a lot longer. You see what I mean? Okay, nice. I, I actually just picked up Very a nice. pair of the of Tyrols recently um, and I, I just started wearing them last week and so far I have been impressed. You talked about how it's got a wider toe box though. I actually had to go half a size down than I normally wear just because of that right there. Uh, and it does give me a lot of support in the heel and it gives me a ton of room up front as well, which is cool. Okay. So you wear the Tyrol shoes as well. Yeah. I, I just started wearing them last week. Yep. Very cool. Do you, do you back up what I'm saying about the heel lock, the wider toe box, the taller toe box? I mean, and also they're broken out of the box. Yeah. Uh, no, I definitely, um, I think I got the Striker Pro Series. Um, I'm trying to pull it up here online. Yeah, so I got the Striker Pro Series, and I definitely will tell you that I feel like I have a ton of support in the heel. I feel like uh, my, my feet don't feel as fatigued when I play for a long period of time. Like I said, the only issue was the first pair that I ordered, I had to send back because I had to go half a size down from what I normally wear because of the exact same thing where the front toe box was so loose that I actually started to get too much movement where I started to blister where now that I went a half a size down perfect. And I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying them. I feel very good in them. Yeah. Same for me. I normally wear a 10 and a half in any pickleball sh or any tennis shoe. And I went down to a 10 and they feel amazing. Um, quick side note, I bought a pair of Nike shoes for a tournament one weekend about, I don't know, maybe eight months ago, six, seven, eight months ago. Um, I put them on for the first time that Friday. I wore them all three days of the tournament, singles, doubles, and mixed doubles. And halfway through the tournament, they were so stiff and not broken in that I was actually bleeding on Oof. both sides of my ankle bone because it oh, just man. rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. So it was it was painful. But I can tell you, I put on the Tyrol shoe, no lie. They feel broken. It's, it's like almost like Kevin puts them on himself and <laughs> breaks them in for us. Although that's not true. That's not what happens. But they're just very pliable and very comfortable right out of the box. And that's a huge deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. Very happy with mine so far, for sure. Very and if nice. you um, do... Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say we have a, another comment here, but if you want to continue with this discussion, go for it, and then I'll I'll ask that next because it's kind of going to change things up a bit. Sure. D just the last thing with that, if you want to go to tyrollpickleball.com, um, if you order a pair, just tell them that uh, the the code that you can use is Golden Boy uh, Pickleball. Nice. All right. Very cool. Um, so John Fuller has a question for you. He says, "Who are you playing with next?" That's a good question. Well, the Atlanta Open was the last big tournament where I had partners lined up um, officially. And I, when, I got, when I accepted the position down at Peak Performance Academy in Florida, I basically had to readjust some of my tournaments. I kind of backed out of a couple of things um, over the next few months. So what I'm going to do is basically move down there in July, take the month of July to kind of hit the reset button get acclimated to F Florida, moving down, getting used to the new job. And I'm not going to play any tournaments probably for the next month or two. And then I'll kind of reevaluate during that time. So um, if I did commit to play with you um, and I forgot and I haven't pulled out of a tournament with you, please message me and say, hey, 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 we agreed to play in this tournament so I can double check that. But um, I know I'm going to the Gamma Classic up in Pittsburgh. I've got partners for that. So I do know I'm going up to that one. Um, but, that, but after that, I don't have anything specifically lined up that I can think of offhand. Okay. All right. So you told us about the, the big news that you had um, with the whole peak performance thing. Um, do you have any other big news? Like any, Did anything good happen to you over the weekend <laughs> during any tournaments you might have played in or anything? Or... <laughs> Funny you ask, my friend. That's uh, ironic <laughs> that you would ask me that question. Um, yeah, th this is a this was a big deal this weekend, man. Not only did I unveil the new news about the job, but also on Saturday, I teamed up with Shelton Jean Baptiste Webster, the unicorn. That's a that's a mouthful right there. But uh, Shelton's from Provo, Utah, and he agreed to fly down on a last minute type of deal and he agreed to come on one condition he said scott i'll fly down there and i'll play with you at the atlanta open but only if you promise that we'll win the gold medal in 5.0 men's doubles <laughs> and i said we'll get it done nice <laughs> right so we I mean, did that, we got yeah. it done <laughs> nice <laughs> that's awesome very it was cool, a good man. Feeling, that's guys. Gotta... I mean, to get to get that monkey off my back. I mean, I that's been the elusive thing for me. I've won some five zero tournaments, but they're they were smaller. They were smaller tournaments, so it's more like honestly, it's more like four five slash five zero type tournaments. This was a tier two sanctioned mm -hmm. tournament by the USAPA. It's being looked at as like a fourth major. It's not officially a fourth major, but it, it, it's a big tournament. And there was, um, I think I heard between 640 players up to 700, somewhere in that range. And Damn, it was, wow. um, yeah, it was a big deal. So it was really, really um, a big accomplishment for me and Shelton. Uh, yeah, man, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a solid performance that you guys had. Uh, what, like, what do you think was, uh, was the key to getting that gold? Was it your chemistry that you guys had? Was it, you know, just in or consistent playing minimal unforced errors? Like, what do you think it was? Um, the, the biggest thing I can tell you is the, uh, the, the, the unity, the chemistry, it was, it was there the first conversation we had on the phone and we just asked a couple questions and we both had that same mindset and we both, um, kind of came together in that one mind and one um just the common goal and then when we got on the court we instantly knew that it was going to be a great fit and to be honest sometimes you just you link up with somebody and you're not sure and things may or may not go well but i just had this gut feeling that we were we were going to do big things and it was a long grueling hot day on saturday we didn't finish up the gold medal match until after like probably 10 o'clock, maybe 9, 30, 10. Um, it was a very long day, but very, very rewarding 
to set out with a goal and then to accomplish that goal with someone you just met. And we knew when we were able to accomplish that, there's big things to come. And we're looking at playing nationals together. One of the big, big perks to winning gold at a sanctioned tournament is that you get early registration for nationals. Yeah. So you don't have to deal with that, that big um, cluster and mess where everybody's you know, shutting down the internet trying to register. So that's a huge deal. I mean, that's a really big deal. Yeah, that's, that's cool, man. That's like one advantage you get, you know, just from kind of showing up and, and playing like you guys did, boom, you're already, you're already ahead of the, the rest of the game, which is pretty great. Yeah. And the opponents that we played were very, very tough teams. Um, one of the teams that we played early in the bracket, we got through them relatively easy in the first round that we played them. Um, we saw them again in the bronze medal match. They absolutely gave us hell. I mean, they, they they were fighting, scratching, and clawing to put us out of the tournament and go to that gold. And it was a very, very intense match. Loved every second of it. We were able to figure out a way to get through them. And when we got back to the gold medal match, um, see, in the winner's bracket final, we actually lost to the team that we ended up beating in the gold medal. But we lost in three games. And the last game, we got beat 11-1. And they played phenomenal, but we knew we just needed to make some adjustments. We talked about those adjustments and we talked about when we get our opportunity to see them again, we're not going to waste that opportunity. We're going to maximize our game plan. We're going to stay focused on that game plan. And we were able to beat them in two games in that best two out of three. We took them down 11-9, 11-8, and then we Beat, we beat them 15 10 in the game uh, to 15. It was an unbelievable feeling when we we closed that out. Yeah, that's for sure. Man, that, that's awesome. That's so cool. And th yeah, the whole the whole tournament was was awesome. The live streaming that Carl put together and had all you guys kind of jumping in on was great. I got to listen to some of your commentary. Uh, I know that your gold medal matches were streamed as well. Like it seemed like an amazing performance. It was actually the first time I saw a tournament and I, I kind of got a little FOMO. I was like, Oh man, why didn't I make it up there? Like I should have, it's only Atlanta. It's not that far from here. Like I really should have tried to get up there, but having the live streams definitely helped me with that for sure. Definitely. Yeah. We, we did something a little different with the live streams. I don't know if people noticed or if it caught on a little bit mm -hmm. later in the weekend, but we, we kind of got together with Carl and, and pro pickleball he was the contracted um, um, audio video company this this weekend, and and instead of saying, "Look, we're not allowing live streaming. We're not going to allow you guys to be a part of this," I want to give Carl huge props for this. He wants to think outside of the box a little bit. So what he did was he pulled us together, kind of like a mastermind team, and he said, "Look, instead of doing my thing and and only me, I want to incorporate you guys into what I'm trying to do." And basically said, the more the merrier for me because he couldn't be everywhere at once mm -hmm. for the tournament. So it really did work out well because we just used his Pro Pickleball platform to go live. And then we shared and asked people to share the uh, live streams on their, for, uh, their platforms, whether it be Pickleball Forum, Pickleball mm -hmm. Underground, the new Uncensored one, doesn't matter. But that's the way we went about it. And personally, I thought it worked really well. Yeah, it, it was cool to have one central place to be able to go and do it all uh, and, and kind of going to your point, man, Carl's the real deal. He's a good guy. He wants to get he wants to get pickleball out to the masses. He wants to give these professional players the credit that they deserve. He's working his butt off. I'm sure this weekend he probably was working nonstop from the second he showed up. He's probably still working right now as as we're doing this podcast. I can I can 100% assure you that he left it all out there this weekend. The guy is a tireless worker. He's got one of the best work ethics I've ever seen. He never stops. Be, what, what people don't see, um, unless you're there and seen it live, is that he was orchestrating and, and facilitating all that was going on with those four courts, those four championship courts. But even so, while all that was going on, he was multitasking by getting out there with his camera yeah. and taking still shots of people yeah. while they're playing. Like, unbelievable how that guy can do that. Yeah, it's impressive, man. 
Yeah, he, he was doing the same yeah, thing at the Florida Grand Slam, just running around, snapping pics of people as he's live streaming, and this camera's broken, and this audio, and he's running around the whole time, and it was just like, the guy's a machine. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah, I thought it was ge- genius the way he had you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it was, I thought it was genius having, all, having you and then uh, Gizmo and Michelle and everybody involved in it, because having you guys all do commentary and doing streaming on your end, like that, that was awesome to get it to get as much games out there and then to have all these familiar voices doing the commentary. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was very, very cool. We, we had some amazing pro matches this weekend. The gold medal matches were best three out of five. So Atlanta open was known. They're known for doing things a little different. Um, Chad Cromwell and Chris Wolf. Uh, this is their third annual Atlanta open. They have gotten better and better each year that they do this. And they are people who listen. Chad and Chris listen to the players. They listen to suggestions. And they really do take the feedback to heart. And each year it continues to get better and better. And they wanted to do something different. You're all anytime you do something different, right, guys, you're gonna get some some kickback, some some um Maybe negativity, maybe not negativity, maybe some constructive criticism. Some people are just not going to agree with what you're doing. But the thing is, innovators and people who are willing to put themselves out there and take that criticism, they're usually the ones that are known for doing huge things in any anything in life that, that, that becomes a big thing. So they're going to be known for some of these firsts, I would say, in pickleball. And I love that. I love that they think outside the box. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like the the biggest thing that people have been talking about is the fact that it was the the best three out of five uh, instead of two out of three for the the tournament. What what did you think about that? Because I've heard uh, some opinions, like some a lot a lot of people were for it, but then some people were not a big fan of it. What did you think about that? Sure. I mean, look, it's easy for me to say I like it because I wasn't doing the best three out of five. So for me, I'm like, <laughs> hey, right. I love that format. You know, it makes it a little more legitimate. I feel like it makes it a little more professional when you say, hey, this is the best three out of five, not a two out of three. Kind of separates the pro division to more of an elite type mindset. Hey, only the top elite players in this sport are going to be able to condition themselves and keep that that mental toughness and that focus through an extra, you know, potentially two more games. And that's a big deal because if you think about it, on the traditional format, best two and three, you can end it in two and be done, or you can be done in three, and their bodies are conditioned for that. They're, mm-hmm. they're conditioned to go those three games. But when you add a potential two more games to what you've already been used to, that, that takes an Im- immense amount of uh, focus, not just physically, but mentally. And you have to fight fatigue, dehydration, um, just a lot of factors and variables that go into that. So I think you're going to hear some some differ, differentiating opinions. Kyle Yates wasn't a huge fan because he said that, you know, Saturday they had a 12-year-old, Annalie Waters, out there. She dehydrated and was not feeling well. Um, but I think if they continue to do this and this becomes something that becomes more mainstream in the sport, I think the pros – will make a quick adapt adaption or, or adjustment to it. And they'll start conditioning their bodies and training prior to these big tournaments to go five, to go five rounds. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely yeah, see definitely. it. I mean, it was definitely hot there. You could tell it was hot, definitely humid. Um, I could see how even adding a couple games, but not very many of the, of the pro matches went to five games though. In fact, I can't think of any right now that, that went to game five that I watched. That's correct. I don't think there was, uh, if there was someone will probably let us know, but I don't think there was a game five in any of them as well. Yeah. So really it was just more like adding one more game, but it probably also messed with you mentally knowing that you could have two more, right? Cause if you have best out of three, you know, you can come on strong for two straight games. But in this, maybe the strategy, and I think Dave Weinbach talked about it a little bit when he was doing commentary, is, hey, we're going to come out a little slow, right? If you're running a 5K versus a 10K, a 5K, you might be able to just turn it on for all 3.1 miles. But a 10K, 
maybe your first couple miles when you're running, you're going to do eight, nine minute mile and then turn it on when you get to, you know, mile five. So that could have played into it as well. Absolutely. And, and I didn't get a chance to interview a lot of the pros like I was wanting to. We had some weather stuff this afternoon. But one, one of the things I wanted to do, um, Bob Nyberger and I said to get some quick one or two minute interviews with a lot of the, the pros that played the best three out of five and get their feedback on it. But um, basically what I want to know is, did these pros condition and train as if they were going to play five, rap, five games? when they got to these matches in preparation for the Atlanta Open? Or did they, hey, this is the first time it's being done. We don't even know if we're gonna actually be in that five game scenario. So we'll just play it by ear and see what it's like the first time. The reason I bring that up is I'm a big, big UFC fan. I love watching UFC. And I've watched a ton of interviews of these fighters. And what you realize is the guys and girls at the top, uh, the men and women at the top of that UFC sport or the MMA sport, they have said this over and over and over during interviews. You play, you fight three rounds in, in the UFC, and, and you, but in a regular fight, but in the championship fights, you're gonna go five rounds, okay, potentially. So when they interview them and they say, hey, you know, did you prepare to go five rounds? A lot of them, what they do is they prepare and go six rounds in, in their training camps. Or instead of five-minute, five five-minute five rounds, they'll go five seven-minute rounds yeah. or five six-minute rounds. So that their body, when they go into the actual championship uh, fight and they're in that fifth round, it actually doesn't feel as bad. You know, their body's been pushed past what they were that thought they were capable of doing. And so that's what I think that the pros are going to start to do if this does catch on. Yeah, that's a great, great point. And it could, it could change the whole, the whole game. If we, if we start to go down this path and could, it could start separating some of those top, top pros, right? Maybe the ones that aren't as good a physical shape as the others, this could start causing a little bit of a divide up there in the top 20 or so. Absolutely. And I think the buzz around the sport right now is if you if you want a blueprint of how to be in the best shape of your life, just follow Tyson McGuffin yeah. because he he is absolutely in peak performance right now. I mean, that dude is an, an animal conditioning wise. Yeah. Um, he is just at the top of the game right now. You, you ask anybody, they'll all say the same thing. Tyson is setting the precedence at the top of the sport at the pro level. He's taking it to another mention right now. Yeah, for sure, yeah, man. The, yeah, the guy's he, a beast. He is a beast. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, Scott, I hope you're ready for this, but John Davison just tuned in. And uh, for anybody that watches regularly, everybody knows that he's usually got the the hardest hitting questions, um, some uh, some crazy comments. And he's got one for you today. Uh, he he wants to say hi. And nothing That's else. It? <laughs> <laughs> what the That's heck? It. <laughs> yep. That's it. Just wants to say hi. <laughs> after after seeing the barrage of questions that he hit Kyle Yates with, I thought he would triple that for me. Right? Oh, that's great. Yeah, he just wants to say hi. <laughs> hi, John. I love it. <laughs> I do feel like I need to put this out there. Um, John Davis and I, and I have played each other in several tournaments, I think three up until today, two or three. And he has yet, he had yet to beat the golden boy in a tournament (laughs) setting until today. Oh, he beat me in mixed doubles today. No way. Yeah, he, he played absolutely phenomenal. He was a little tight in the beginning. I think he was a little little tight, a little nervous maybe. Um, but the dude settled in, and he and his partner got a great game plan. Uh, the second half of that game, they just controlled the game. They, they executed the stuff that they needed to execute to close this out. Um, it was 12-11 at one point late in the game, and they uh, put away the next three, three or four points. Th- I guess it was three points. 
and beat us 15-11. So, yeah. And then he ended up in the, I believe, uh, bronze or gold medal match um, and when it started raining. Okay. So so the rain came and it, it was over? Is that what happened? You know, it's weird. They were actually, when, when we were leaving, the people that weren't playing, uh, we were leaving. They were going to try to dry off the four courts and play out the the rest of the brackets. But a lot of the people had already left. So what they were going to do is basically, it, if you got to a medal round or the winner's bracket finals, they were going to, if you were the last team standing and hadn't left yet, they were going to award that team the gold. Okay. And then if you were the next team in line, you would get the silver. And then if you were that team that was like, in the bronze medal maybe or had left already that you were going to get the bronze so um yeah it was interesting to see how that worked out i actually i just pulled up the bracket here now and it looks like there were two gold uh or no there was a 50 plus gold medal team and then uh it looks like john davidson and stacy townsend got silver in uh in the 19 plus so that's awesome that's good for them man that's really cool yeah uh, Kenny Chow said, uh, in response to uh, you talking about John Davison, he said, he beat my ass too, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's because I, I gave uh, John the inside scoop on how to beat you, Kenny. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I actually didn't. I, don't e I haven't even played Kenny yet, so I, I don't know how I would know that. So uh, just kidding. Ah. <laughs> <up. laughs> uh. Man. Did you guys did you guys hear about Puppet Master getting nasty Nelson? Did you guys hear that 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 news? We we heard it, man. We're still waiting for somebody yeah. to just magically show up with video because as soon as that happens, we are gonna promote that. Like Nelson got Nelson, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't even know if this is etiquette to even bring it up and talk about it, but like let like let's just put it out there. How epic is that? Yeah, I I mean, I, w first of all, getting Nasty Nelson must suck. It must absolutely suck. It must be the <laughs> worst thing in the world. Uh, but to have that happen to you, and it wasn't at the first serve of the of the game. It was the ref called zero zero two, and he reared back and lit Timothy Nelson up. Now I wasn't there; I didn't see it live. But from what I understand. It caught him by complete surprise, hit him right in the stomach area, and he was just in complete shock. He had no words. He took his hat and his glasses and threw them off his face and threw him to the sideline, and he just gave uh, Zane Affleck the stare down for like five seconds or something. <laughs> it was oh, crazy. Man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, I just, yeah. I pray, I pray that somebody was recording this and just has been holding on to it and hasn't released it yet. <laughs> yeah. Cause well, that would be so amazing. I will tell you, it's not a hundred percent confirmed yet, but the golden boy is on the, the hunt. I'm going to track the, any video down that is, was recorded. Um, I've got a strong lead right now about somebody who did record this in its full glory but I'm not going to release any details until I officially see it firsthand. And then we can go from there and see how, how it happens. Interesting. Oh man, that, that would be golden to get your hands on that footage. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Listen, last night I actually put something out there and said, does anybody have footage of, of Timothy Nelson getting tagged by nasty Nelson? And some of the people were saying, Oh, you know, that, that was dumb. Uh, or your account must've got hacked because that he was going to do a second interview. That's probably out the window, but here's my response to that. Timothy Nelson is the creator of the nasty <laughs> Nelson. So if you can dish it out, you gotta be able to take it. Right. A hundred percent agree, would, man. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I don't, I, I, I think that, I think that, uh, I think that Timothy Nelson could still even be a little sour, um, sour about it right now. I know I would be. If I got tagged out of sheer surprise like that, I'd probably be pretty upset about it. But I also think that he's a pretty reasonable guy, and I don't think that he's going to have any hard feelings for people if they want to talk about it or see video of it because it's kind of an epic thing that happened. 
it, it's legendary in my mind because I'm a huge, yeah. huge fan of of the nasty Nelson shot. And if anybody's ever watched any, any of my videos, that is one of the most incredible feelings when you hit somebody with the nasty Nelson, as long as they have a great sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I'm kind of happy that this got brought up because uh, you just reminded me, and I haven't even told Eddie about this. Uh, this past week during rec play, I got my first nasty Nelson ever, and it was intentional. It was it an intentional? intentional nasty Nelson. Yeah. So this guy, <laughs> the guy on the opposite team, every time I was serving, like he would go super close to the center line when uh, when I was serving to his uh, teammate. So after about three times doing that, I was like, you know what, I'm. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see if I can pull off a nasty Nelson. And sure enough, I did it. It was a perfect shot right towards his chest. I mean, he got, he got his paddle up and kind of like blocked the ball, but I mean, it, it like, does it, does that still count? Like he hit the, it hit his paddle and it like went into the net. I mean, does that still count yeah, or he can't touch it? Okay. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. All right. So yeah, I mean, it, I got, could, I got a legit hit. nasty Nelson intentionally. <laughs> That's incredible. Hey, round of applause for you, yeah. Webby. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. It was a very proud moment. I can't believe I forgot to tell you about it. Like it was, uh, um, it just, it all happened so fast. And then like, it was one of those days where I didn't have to wait to play games. So I was playing game after game after game. So it kind of slipped my mind, but yeah, that was, uh, that was an awesome feeling. <laughs> Did you consciously think about doing it? And then you executed the nasty Nelson to perfection. Yeah. Cause, uh, like I had served three times, uh, in this game and each time I was like, man, what is he doing? He's like standing like almost right at the center line. Like I've never seen anybody stand at that point when I'm serving to their teammate. And I was like, if, if ever there was a time to do a nasty Nelson, like this is it. Cause I mean, like he's like, he's, I'm almost hitting him anyway. So I was like, I'll just aim a little bit more to the left than I normally do. I was serving, I was on the left side when I was serving. So I was serving over to his teammate. And uh, so he was across from me at the, at the kitchen line, but like, like almost at the center line. I'm like, I'm, I'm going for it. And I, and I pulled it off. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Love it. That's incredible. I, I wasn't going to share these details, but I, I'm going to do this now. I have hit five nasty Nelsons in the last two weekends um, in rec play. In one game, I hit the same team three times. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm not going to name names. I won't name names because we got to protect the innocent here. But that was crazy. I never, ever in my life would expect to hit the same team three times. That's solid. You know, actually, uh, <laughs> Scott, I'm excited now. Now that you're uh, going to be, you know, doing instructions at peak performance, um, I'm hoping to get a lesson with you. And I'm hoping the first one is just 100% how to hit a nasty Nelson. We're not going to work on drop shots. We're not going to work on, on ground strokes, anything like that. Just how to hit a nasty Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Eddie. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's go. Let's go one on one with that. That'll be a private lesson. We won't. We won't put that out there for everybody. But that will be a good one. It'll be a good one. That actually, we should do a video on that. How to hit a nasty Nelson with Scott Golden. That would be hilarious. Nice. The the, the number one rule <laughs> is when you when you execute it and you hit the person, you have to have a huge smile on your face because that will ease the tension. Because people do get a little bit. Uh, they get a little bit upset sometimes if you, oh, if yeah. you do it to the wrong person. But you sure. got to do it to the right people. That's great. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John Davison actually does have a new comment here. He says, Scott, we have beers to drink. Yeah, actually, I didn't really mention this to you guys. He gave me a time limit with you guys and said uh, the pizza would be there in 30 <laughs> minutes and the beer would be ice cold. And oh, I man. think I might have passed that already. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm I'm headed over to hang out with John and a couple of the the pros that played this weekend and some other people. So it'll be a fun evening. Oh, nice! That's Very great, nice. man. Well, we don't we don't want to hold you up from that. And I live in Naples, and it's nine seventeen, so it's already past my bedtime as well, which is something oh, you'll man, learn very quickly when you move down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sleepy town, isn't it, Eddie? I know we go to that. bed early, but we wake up early, man. <laughs> Yeah, you've been yawning the whole time, and I thought it, I thought my my interview with you tonight was very boring. No, I'm loving this. This is just this is how I roll. But you know, hey, what are you gonna do? It's 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 a great life we have down here. That's for sure. I love it. I can't wait to get down there. 
guys, thank you all so much. Um, is there any other questions or anything else you guys want to say before I jump off here? I, I just want to say congrats, man. I love what you're doing. Um, and I'm excited to see where this is going and hopefully we'll get a chance to, to hang out once you move down here, man. That's yeah. And same thing. I just want to say, yeah, for sure. And I, I just want to say, uh, also congrats, uh, the, the, on the, the news with peak performance, uh, congrats on getting a gold medal in the, the men's doubles 5.0. Um, pretty, pretty epic week, uh, pretty epic weekend for you. I must say. Yeah, one of the highlights of my my career in pickleball. I love it. I'll never forget this weekend. Thank you to my partner, Shelton, um, who flew down from Utah. Um, we got it done. Gold medal at 5.0. It was, it was awesome. And guys, last thing, thank you so much. Your willingness and, and just, just y'all's attitude uh, to, to just bring pickleball to people, bring a different feel, a different dynamic. You guys are so laid back, so easygoing. Um, a lot of times you're, you're, you're even self-deprecating, which I think is hilarious because I know that you guys are on the move. You're, you're working hard to improve your game. But there's something really cool about how you guys um, just go about this. And, and it's a really, really fun thing when I get to come on with you guys and just, you know, shoot, shoot the bull and, like, hang out. And it's, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm best friends with you guys, you know, and that's a good, that's a good feeling. For sure, man. Well, we appreciate that. It's nice. good, awesome yeah. feedback. We Thanks, love man. having you on. All right, guys. I'm going to jump yeah, off I'll... here before John Davison gives me any more crap. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's all yours, yeah. John. Have fun. <laughs> Sorry, John. Right, Sorry fellas. for taking up the, uh, the golden boy. <laughs> taking your time. Right, he'll be fine. He'll get over it. <laughs> all right, man. Have one on us, Scott. Thanks, man. All right. All right see guys. you, Scott. See you, uh, Eddie, see you in July, bud. Sounds good, man. All right. See you, Webby. See you. Later. Man, love it. <laughs> so cool. Always, I always, it's always, always awesome him. talking to the Golden Boy. Yeah, I always love having Scott Golden on. Always a great time, and I just I love the fact that he's always so willing to join us. I mean, it's always a great discussion, and uh, he's always got something new going on. And this man, this weekend was definitely an amazing weekend for him. So that's I'm real, real proud of him. Real happy of his accomplishments. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I mean, God. He's getting teamed up with the king and queen of pickleball, Chad and Simone. And like, yeah. just, it's amazing. Like, I think it's such a perfect fit for him. Uh, personally, I'm excited. I, I really do hope that I get a chance to to hang out with him on a personal level more. And we've, we've hung out a couple times, but, you know, I'd like to hang out more, grab some beers, It'd be a good time. Yeah, and hopefully he'll uh, still be able to make it to the Beer City Open. I know he's uh, he said he had to... Uh, kind of back out of a few things because of his new obligations. Hopefully I'll get a chance to see him at the beer city open. If not, then I'm sure next time I go down to, to visit you in Naples, I'll be able to swing by and, and see him. Come down anytime, man. You know that like, I, I wouldn't recommend coming this time of year because if you're already hot in Michigan with this weather, <laughs> you're, you're going to die yeah. down here. But yeah, maybe, maybe like, yeah, def definitely won't be, definitely won't be any time in the next couple months. That's for yeah. sure. October. That's for damn sure. Like October is about the right. Well, your your bachelor party was down here, and that was in September, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was, was like, still pretty pretty friggin' hot. <laughs> yeah, you were dying <laughs> there, but ah, uh, good show, man. We have been streaming for over three hours as of right now. Holy jeez! Yeah, that's a long time. I think it's time to wrap it up. What do you say? Yeah, I would say so, but man, another super awesome night. It was awesome having Michelle on earlier. Always awesome having Scott on uh, anytime. And uh, yeah, another very cool night. We could easily go on for more, many more hours, but uh, we're not gonna. We're not gonna because we respect your time, but we appreciate it. A lot of good interaction tonight. It was great having Michelle on. It's always good to have Scott Golden on. The next time that you guys hear from me, I will be in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, maybe we'll have one between now and June 20th, but not 100% sure just yet, but we'll keep you updated. Right, Webby? Yep. Stay tuned to find out what we do next. That's right. This has been another installment of Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby. We hope you liked it. It's raw, it's uncensored, and you never know what's going to happen on this show. That's right. You never, never know. And on that note, 
I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. See ya.